In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at computer networking and how networks work from beginning all the way to the end. Now, there are two primary ways to connect to the internet. One, of course, is through your computer, and the other, of course, is through your mobile phone. And you can see here, I've got two main portions to this. One is, of course, the internet, and then I have a distributed network over here that represents a company's website that you might connect to. So let's start from beginning all the way to the end. So if you're over here on your computer and you type in HTTP, now HTTP is the protocol that is used to communicate back and forth from your computer to a web server. And then, of course, from the web server back to your computer. Now, when you attempt to connect to a web server, that is called a request. The message that gets sent back is called the response. So that is going on when you open up your browser and you type in HTTP and the web address that you want to go to. Now, when you first make that request, you will hit your local ISP. Now, it used to be that the major ISP and the local ISP were different companies, but today those local ISPs have been bought out by the big ISPs. So it's not uncommon for these to be the same company. So once again, you'll hit this local ISP. Then before you get to the major ISP, you will go through several third-party cloud devices as well as several content delivery networks. Then eventually your packet will eventually make it to the major ISP. And then the major ISP will redirect it to the website that you are intending to reach. Now you'll notice this big brick wall here. This represents a firewall. And companies will put up firewalls to protect themselves from the internet. So they will only accept certain types of requests that come from your computer. The packet has to be correct with the correct port and IP address. And we'll talk more about that actually in the next video, how packets work. So anyways, if everything is correct, you will be allowed through this firewall. Think of this almost like a gatekeeper from medieval times. The gatekeeper will allow only certain people to enter into the castle. He will reject everybody else that does not have the proper credentials. So once you are accepted through the firewall, you will hit the web server. Now this is a very important server, obviously, because this hosts the landing page or the home page. This is what you see when you hit the company's web server. Now I do want to point out that in very large companies, they will often have all kinds of load balancers, switches, and routers before you even hit the web server. So once the web server does whatever it needs to, it ships it off to an application server. Now an application server is a web server, but it usually does not actually host out the landing page or home page. That is what the main web server does. The application server will handle the communications to the database server. That's one of its primary functions. And then whatever data needs to be stored will be done by the database server. And let's say you made some sort of configuration change and let's say you were setting up some stock symbols that you wanted to watch and you wanted to have some alerts set up, that would be stored on physical storage. And this is actually the lowest level in this entire chain. And then the response would be sent from the web server back to your screen. So this entire process from request to response is called the round trip. That's what you'll hear network professionals call this, the round trip. Now, I also want to point out something else that is used inside the distributed network. You will hear people often call this, this layer right here here, they will refer to as the front end tier. That is because this is at the front line. Again, this is the landing page or home page that you see. So they will refer to this layer as the front end tier. It is also called the presentation tier. Now this tier, the application server, is often called the middle tier or logic tier. Now at the database level, this is often called the back end tier or data tier. So this is the lowest level. Now, why is this important? Well, a lot of web programmers will refer to this when they're developing their web application. They may say, hey, we're working on the front tier or we're working on the middle tier or we're working on the lower level tier. The other important note I want to make here is you'll hear these buzzwords today called application performance monitoring. And that is becoming more and more important. And what does that mean? Well, companies are very concerned about that round trip from your client to their web servers and how long that takes. So that's called application performance monitoring. And basically, you know, when you've been on the web and the page doesn't load, that is a performance issue. And so they want to know what is causing that. Is it on your PC? Is it out in the internet? Or is it within their own distributed network? And so if that slowdown is inside their distributed network, they want to know where that slowdown is occurring. Is it occurring in the front end tier or is it a problem in the low end tier? So that's becoming very critical. Companies are more and more concerned how their application is performing and how long that round trip takes from your client to the web server. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you.